Hola, comadres. Welcome to another episode of Comadre on the Podcast. I'm your host, Marcy. And today, we have a solo episode. Um, there's been a lot of things going on, and I want to catch you all up on what's happening. And also, you know, just kind of shoot the shit and um, uh, not get reacquainted, but just catch you guys up. Anywho, uh, I hope all is well and that all of your families are doing great. I know summer is off to quite a start. Uh, I'm recording today. It's Sunday before the episode drops and it's been pretty cloudy the whole uh, weekend. It just started to rain. I was actually supposed to attend an event with Melanie Santos, but um, because of the weather, I decided not to go. Also, the trains are bugging out uh, as usual. That's not weird for the um, MTA. However, you know, people are making the best that they can out of a situation. Anywho, I'm trying a new setup. So I'm recording on GarageBand and I am using my iPhone camera uh, in photo booth to record the video. So let me know what you think. But I personally think that the um, video quality is way better for those of you that watch the YouTube um, channel itself. So, what's been happening with your comadre? So, we've been having a lot of family events, and one of the main ones that have happened are my brother's wedding, Lenning, the little one. Uh, so, that's what made me pick the topic for today which is making events inclusive and sensory friendly for our loved ones with special needs. And the reason why the topic came up is that summertime means many different events that we participate in with our children and loved ones that have special needs. So some of those events that come up are weddings, graduations, award ceremonies, holidays like the 4th of July. So we're gonna be talking about how to prepare your loved ones for these important events in advance. Before we get into the topic, we're going to talk about all the stuff that has happened since the last episode dropped. So basically, uh, we had the end of the school year. So the end of the school year was interesting. Um, I reconnected with my people from the school that I used to teach at before. I actually attended their end of the year event. I did go to the end of the year event with the school I'm currently teaching at. Yeah, I had kind of a, it wasn't an altercation per se, but this school has been kind of like messing with me since like last year. So the way that I came into the school was that I was recommended by somebody. That person um, eventually got on their bad side and as a repercussion of that, they have been kind of treating me like the stepchild um, at the school. And I know people are gonna be like, well, Marcia, it can't just be you. Um, no, but it's noticeable. And um, I know we've discussed this on the show before, but there are certain schools, particularly in the Washington Heights area, that cater more to people that are other. And not other like black and brown people, but other. So those people get preferential treatment, um, they are listened to, when they complain about something, things are taken care of right away. However, when people of color complain or voice their concerns, things are not taken into account as seriously as those people. And I'm not talking out of you know my armpit, it's literally, proven and if i bring on the other teachers that i have had on the show they will be able to tell you pretty much the same thing so uh yeah i feel like i've been being treated like a stepchild and basically i'm gonna be back in the classroom next year which whatever i don't really care however um the way that they're going about it is a little sneaky so i had to kind of uh rein it in and kind of stand my ground and let them know that i will not be pushed around nor will i be intimidated because i've been teaching way too long 
I also have a mom that is part of the Department of Education. Not that I mean that doesn't have anything to do with my career. However, I do know how things work, and I'm not going to be intimidated by somebody that has less experience than I do, and also has doesn't really care about the kids. So, yeah, that was that was the end of the school year for me. <laughs> So I am looking for other schools to teach at. So if you know of a school, um, it doesn't matter if it's charter, private, or whatever, let me know. I'll send in my resume. Uh, yeah, so that is that. And I will keep you guys posted when I find another school to teach at. Yeah, okay, let's take a woosah for that. I don't like talking about negative things, but it, it's necessary sometimes, like, I'm not going to be one of these people that is just going to be like scared of what they have to say or whatever because that's just not going to happen. Anywho, so my brother's wedding, you guys know we've been planning it for quite a while now. So a whole bunch of stuff happened like leading up to the wedding. Not necessarily with the wedding itself. Well, some things lead, dealing with the wedding. But other things not so i i didn't really talk about it but like three months before the wedding it was set to happen the venue where we were gonna hold the wedding decided to cancel last minute so they had to scramble to find another venue to hold the wedding at um which in the moment like when it happened we felt kind of like overwhelmed all of us and also it was very shady the way that it happened they kind of sent like a general email to all the couples that they were hosting weddings for for the season for summer and said we will no longer be able to hold host your wedding and then the email went on to say that they were concerned like they were thinking about it but they will be able to return their refund first of all that's illegal you sign a contract it's not that the couple is backing out it's you guys that are not providing the service so they have to give back the refund so them saying that was kind of like shady in it in and of itself but when they sent the email they immediately took down the website they took down the the Instagram and all like everything else so that made us panic but since they said that they were gonna um that they were gonna refund like we didn't do anything like legally we didn't look for a lawyer or anything like that so we like kept it calm whatever in the meanwhile my brother's so good at, at handling these kind of situations I know he freaked out in the moment but he didn't show it and they were able to find another venue which was beautiful they decided to have their wedding in pennsylvania since they they just love pa i don't know i mean pa is nice but it's just like a place that they really adore so they usually do weekends in philly and all of that so they decided to find another since all their vendors were already in pennsylvania they decided just to find another venue in pa um to host a wedding at so after much research they found this beautiful spot called the pocono palms which i highly recommend the team there is like their customer service is top tier the team is on it like they're so welcoming to the other vendors they you know the everything is sourced locally which i think that's what my brother and my sister-in-law really wanted besides that they had a ke hold on i'm gonna i'm gonna well her name's carrie she was the wedding coordinator and she is amazing like she was so welcoming to all of us um when i let her know that aiden had autism i think they they let her know beforehand but when she like met him and got to know him she was like super accommodating making sure that he was feeling okay um giving him breaks when he needed aiden was just he behaved so well and it wasn't that i was expecting him not to it's just that a wedding is a big thing and it's a lot of people and there's a lot of like there's a lot of expectations of behavior that are had not only by the people that are having the wedding but 
everybody else that's there. But everybody was so accepting of Aiden's differences that it just made him feel so comfortable. So we're going to get into how we made him feel and prepare for the wedding. So yeah, so her... I'm going to give you guys her Instagram handle right now. So yeah, it's KE Coordination. And she is amazing she is located in pennsylvania and she is just like her vision she really helps the p the couple get their vision off the ground um we also worked with love and night studio pennsylvania which is the the photographers the photographers were also super accommodating they were making sure that they had like a shot list of everybody that needed to participate in certain things and they let us know ahead of time. So the name of the photographers are Ilona and Urek and they're, they're a husband and wife wedding team. They are, first of all, Ilona has this eye for like setting up shots. She'll direct you exactly like how you need to be so that the wedding pictures are top tier so uh yeah so those are the people that we worked with um there was also like a bartending um uh, uh what is it not caterer like a bartending service they were great too um i'm sober so i didn't really uh participate but they were attentive in the sense that they were aware that i was sober so they were making sure that whenever they sent me over something to drink it wasn't obviously didn't have alcohol in it um what else and then the food was really good uh they were working with this um what is it called frog town yeah it's called frog town chop house yeah the frog town chop house they were the caterer for the event and they are amazing like they had all these yummy like obviously my brother and sister-in-law picked the things that were gonna be part of the menu but they made sure that they made it like it was like little new things that Aiden was trying and he actually tried everything so he had waffles with um ch chicken and waffles he had um this thing surprised me he had these little of uh, spring rolls veggie spring rolls and I was just like my eyes were like if you guys are looking at the YouTube video but m my eyes were like wide and I'm like watching him as he's eating it and then he's asking for more and I'm like, who are you and what do you do with my child? Um, they did not have rice and chicken at the wedding, but they did have chicken, like they have multiple pro different proteins. So he was able to pick the one that he wanted to eat. He eventually settled on um, barbecue chicken and um, they also had a uh, baked potato. What I liked about Frogtown Chop House is that they had like family style. So they brought us platters of everything, right, for the table. And then we would serve each other, not serve each other, but serve ourselves from the platter, depending on what we wanted to eat. Um, so, yeah, like everybody, like Aiden ate a lot. And, and he actually was very adventurous with the things that were served there. So there was no meltdown. There was no crying or like uh, being upset about that. Um he did pretty well so anyway let me start from the beginning um of how we got him ready for the ceremony so basically what i did i want to say six months before i started mentioning that his uncle and his titi were going to be getting married so six months before I didn't mention it every day, but like I would mention it once in a while to just remind him. Um, then once he started seeing that spring was coming, he did not participate in the bridal shower or like the bachelor stuff, because obviously that's for adults. But um, when I went to the bachelorette, I let him know. I was like, Nino, remember, I'm going to beat these bridal shower and that they're going to get married next month. So that was another reminder for him. Then um, once it started getting warmer, summer started getting closer, he kept reminding me like, oh, okay, it's May. What month is next month? And I'm like, oh, it's June. And he's like, and what's happening in June? And then I was like, he's like, oh, we're going on vacation. 
I was like, yeah, we're going to be on vacation. But also, what's happening? Who's getting married? He's like, oh, Uncle Lenny and Titi Joel are getting married. So it was kind of like a reminder for him. So every, I want to say like every weekend, like Sunday to Monday, he would ask me the same question just to like prepare himself for the event. Um, as, the, as the event got closer, I involved him in ordering the suit so you know i showed him i was like look your uncle's gonna be wearing this color suit uncle your other uncle albert is gonna be wearing this color suit which suit color do you prefer he decided to dress like the the groomsmen so even though he didn't go to indochino because i wasn't paying 500 dollars for a suit for him because he's a man's size he wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna be like a baby suit it was gonna be like a men's size suit and at a, like he's growing so i didn't feel like making that type of investment at the moment would have made sense financially especially if he's gonna wear it once and then we're not gonna wear it again for a while you know so i decided to get the same exact color but i looked for more affordable options and i actually got the suit from h m which is where i got his suit for graduation last year for <clears throat> for when he graduated from junior high school. So that suit that he wore last year, the, like the, it wasn't powder blue, what was that? That was kind of like, it looked like a denim color, but it really wasn't. So it was like a denim color suit that I got him last year. It was a linen suit from H&M. I decided to go with linen because it's a breathable material and we know our homeboy loves to wear comfortable clothes so i made sure that i got a breathable material that wasn't going to feel so restricted on his body and we know how linen works that after you're wearing it for a while it kind of just adjusts to your body and gets a little bit bigger as you're wearing it throughout the night so i involved him in the picking process um i showed him the different types of shirts i kind of showed him like what the guys were wearing and, and then i showed him like his options of what what he wanted to wear so I gave him um, the option, I don't think they call it Mandarin collar anymore, so I apologize if that's offensive, but um, it's a, like a, what is it, a tab collar, button down shirt, as opposed to a, a typical classic, you know, suit shirt. So he went with the classic suit shirt. Um, I d additionally, I ordered him a t-shirt because we know he liked to, he likes to be comfortable. So I figured like after pictures and the ceremony itself, if he got hot or like got uncomfortable then i was going to go ahead and and get and like put him in a t-shirt so that was like me thinking preemptively knowing how he would react um to that so we did that we ordered everything the suit i ordered actually i went one size up from the one i got him last year and when i got it it was like way too tight so i had to like send it back and reorder the suit and that came on time thank god however it did come like right on time like right the weekend before the wedding so i had to like take it to the tailor that i have shout out to 181 corner cleaners on 181st um i've been working with her for years she is a phenomenal tailor i had already sent my dress to be hemmed there it had already like two or three weeks there but i did let her know that aiden sue would be coming and that i would need her to do the alterations last minute because they sent me the like we ordered the wrong size and we got the finally had the right size so i sent him with his um respite worker shout out to mr robert so they went together he tried on the suit um i told him that he needed to get the suit fixed so that he can look nice and sharp for the wedding he was completely on board he took the bus there with with him and he kept like talking about like oh what's happening next week okay it's the wedding so he didn't understand the concept of the tailor. So when he had to leave the suit there, he had kind of, not a meltdown, but he kind of objected to the fact he's like, oh no, where's my suit? I need my suit, I need my suit back. And then um, the respite worker had to talk to him about, hey, they're just holding it for us and they're gonna fix it so that it can be perfect for the wedding. We'll pick it up right before we leave. So then that made him a little bit more calm about it. So I reached out to his speech provider at school and I asked them to help him write uh, a speech for the wedding. So he actually worked on that with the speech provider. So I guess they were talking about that to him as well. 
uh so then the the weekend of the event you know he saw us packing he's like what are we packing where are we going and then um he would be he would tell me himself i wouldn't have to tell him he was like we're going to uncle lenny's wedding and i was like where it's gonna happen he's like it's in pennsylvania and we're gonna drive with grandma and he was excited about missing the last two days of school because it was actually the 23rd of june so we were leaving thursday morning to pa because thursday evening like early evening we were having the rehearsal dinner so mentally he already knew that we were having a short week so once once um once we did that he was just like really excited he's like oh no i don't want to go to school blah, blah, blah. i'm like okay but you know this the week is going to be short we're going to be going to uncle lenny's wedding so that helped him a lot with getting acclimated and you could hear him in the background aiden So that helped him just get acclimated to the whole situation of, you know, missing school and then getting ready mentally to be in another state, which, you know, he loves hotels. So when I told him we were staying in a hotel, he was like, oh, we're going to a hotel and we're going to hang out with Uncle Lenny and we're going to have dinner. So, um, yeah, so when we went to, like, the day, that Thursday, you know, Wednesday, whatever, I sent him Wednesday with his um, respite worker to go and get a haircut. That was cool because he knew he was getting ready for the wedding, so he was excited. Then um, the day of, he was like, he helped me pick out what he was going to take with him to wear while we were in Pennsylvania. And then uh, once he picked those things, the next day we woke up, whatever, had breakfast, got ready. I went and... Um, Sorry, comadre. It's back to um, back to the topic. So yeah, so the day of we got ready. I let him sleep in. I actually took him to the the community rehabilitation person so that I can go get my eyebrows done. Um, in the meanwhile, so I went and did that. He hung out with that person until it was time to go. Then um, mom, of course, left her hair for the last minute, so she was in the city already getting her hair done in the Bronx. Once she was done, she picked us up. We left to um, Jersey to get her stuff, and then from there we drove to PA. Um, he's really good with car rides, so he already knew he had his iPad fully charged. I took a external battery pack, which is one of the things that I said is like, you know, c comes in very clutch when we're traveling, even if it's just, if it's even if it's not like, traveling abroad just like traveling within the united states it's always good to have that external battery pack because you don't know when you're going to be able to actually charge it and like also when you're driving you need your phone to be charged especially if you're using gps to be able to get to the location so having aiden charging his phone in the car is not always um feasible mom has like one of um an, an older model of a rav4 not like super old but it doesn't have like all those extra USB ports all over the car to charge it. So the external battery pack, pack was like really helpful actually. So um, it wasn't that far. It was like it's in the Poconos and we live in upper in like north northern Jersey in Bergen County. So the drive from my mom's house to the place was like an hour and five minutes, which was not bad at all. We barely encountered any traffic by the time we got there. Um, it was great. We were able to get him, like, chicken nuggets that he wanted. So that was fun for him. Then um, he actually took a nap on the way there. Not because we told him to, but he just was, like, tired. So he, like, knocked out. So by the time we checked into the hotel, he was, like, really excited. He's like, oh, are we going to go to the pool? And I'm like, I don't think this hotel has a pool. So the, the hotel we stayed at is um, right off of Route 80. It isn't the most fancy of places. They were very accommodating and they were very nice. But would I tell you guys the name of the hotel so you guys can stay there? Absolutely not. I feel like um, we could have spent maybe the same amount of money and got an Airbnb. But 
since it was like a wedding thing and everybody that was going to the wedding was staying in the hotel, I'm sure they gave us a better deal, quote unquote. So I don't know, whatever. Anyway. So he knew we were going to have the rehearsal dinner. So we got to the hotel. He changed. He was waiting. Um, He was excited because I got him. Oh, and then that, that's another thing. I knew he wasn't going to like wearing like actual shoes. So I double checked with my brother whether or not it was okay for him to wear sneakers or shoes. Like he said that if I'm if he's if it's okay that if he's okay with it that he can wear shoes. Like they were gonna all wear brown shoes, but that if that was gonna be too much for him, that he's cool with him wearing some sneakers. So I sent them like a couple of options of which sneakers I was thinking about. We ended up just getting him his favorite, which are the um, Nike Air Force ones, which. The Nike Air Force Ones, which are, you know, the Uptowns. Uh, that's what we call them in New York City. So, all white sneaker, um, very clean, uh, classic, clean lines, nothing crazy. So, we got those. So, he was excited about, you know, breaking those in. So, he wore them for the rehearsal dinner. And then the rehearsal dinner was very casual, very low-key. They knew Aiden Sensory stuff. So the place was very quiet. It was actually like a barbecue place. It's actually top rated in PA. And it's part of like this barbecue association. I don't know what that means, but they were like telling us about it and that they had the prize and they were very proud. So um, I will get you the name of the, of the barbecue spa. Uh, my brother, the best man, Albert, he paid for the dinner um, but, you know, it's barbecue food, so it had, like, different types of protein, so, like, ribs and all that stuff and chicken, which Aiden eats, but there was no rice or and there was no, nothing really that Aiden could eat as a side. So I did speak to the server, and I, like, I explained to her, I was like, listen, my son is autistic, um, he doesn't really eat eat all the things that are there he'll eat the chicken however you know there's nothing that he can eat as a side that he can enjoy because like i asked him if he wanted the mac and cheese i asked him of course i was completely off the table i wasn't even gonna ask and he doesn't eat tuna salad either so i just let her know i was like do you guys have french fries or anything or like some kind of potato and um she said that they did have french fries and i spoke to the owner and they were like, okay, sure, we'll, we'll, we'll make you a side of french fries. So um, I was like, I'll pay for it. I don't mind. And then the lady was going to charge me, but then the owner was like, no, just give it to her. So that was really nice. So shout out to them for that because they, they didn't really have to. Usually people, like, try to take advantage, especially when it's a wedding, um, to just make as much money as they can. But they were, like, super sweet and super um, understanding. And then the people in the wedding party have been around Aiden since he was a baby. So they know more or less like the sensory issues. They know that he's going to um, vocally stim and like make like comments and and do the echolalic speech during the ceremony. I was like talking to him. I was like, remember, you know, dinner at dinner where it's like the library. We have to like keep as quiet as possible. So that helps some. But there was like moments that he was like you know do the echolalic speech and it was super loud but then i would like give him the reminder and he's like okay and he's like oh sorry mom and and he'll go back to whispering yeah so that was that we came back home we went to uh, he was cool with like hanging out he loves hotels so like as soon as he got to the hotel he put on some pajamas he's hanging out in the bed watch it and playing with his cartoons recording videos um i went with my brother to walmart that night i was able to get him like pajamas which he doesn't really wear he's usually like a a, a tank top and underwear kind of kid especially because he has like the boxer briefs so he likes those shorts that are like fitted he won't wear like a regular boxer so he's usually that kind of kid but i found him some Pikachu pajama pants at a uh, Target and then I got him golden Oreos which he loves as a snack so that was cool and then the next day for the wedding like he was hanging out with my mom um you know for since I was part of the bridal party and I was officiating I had to be in makeup super early so like I was up at like 8 30 
he knocked out and kept sleeping until the evening like not the evening until like late afternoon i want to say so he was just hanging out with my mom until it was her turn to do her makeup and then um since the hotel provided breakfast i made sure my mom got him they didn't have any eggs but they did have waffles which he likes so i made sure that she went out and got him like a couple of waffles for him to eat you know and then like if push came to shove there was like a dunkin donuts across the street that i was gonna get him whatever it was that he wanted to eat and then bring it back yeah so he was pretty chill in the hotel room the whole time hanging out with my mom eventually it came time to like get ready and head over to the venue we left like around 12 o'clock i let him know like the rundown of what was gonna happen so I told them that we were going to get to the place, that there was not going to be a lot of people, that we were going to all get dressed up, that he is going to hang out with the boys, and that they're, they're gonna, we're going to be taking pictures with the photographer. He's like, okay, mom. So we got to the venue. Um, my sister-in-law's brother-in-law? So her sister's boyfriend gave us a ride to the venue because we missed the initial ride because mom didn't know that she was going to be in the wedding picture so um she thought she had more time that she needed um to get ready i was already ready but when we got the call i was like mom you need to come too yeah so whatever so that was like a little inconvenience but aiden was cool with like the transition and getting ready faster than what we expected so we got to the venue the guys were going to hang out with the guys and the girls were going to be in the bridal suite. That made me a little apprehensive because I didn't know how he was going to react to be away from me and then be like with the boys. So when I got there to the place, I walked him upstairs with the groomsmen and um, my brothers were both like, don't worry, we got him. Like, just go downstairs with the girls. We got him. So my little brother had gotten him a pocket square and a tie to match the groomsmen, which was super sweet. And he got him a tie clip with his initials. So he felt so special because he gave it to him at the um, rehearsal dinner. And he was just like, for me, thank you, Uncle Lenny. And then so the groomsmen like helped him finish getting himself together. So he was wearing the suit and the shirt and the sneakers but like they helped him like get like all the way spiffy so he put on his belt he put on the tie they got him a, you know actually he didn't have a belt they got him a belt they get, they put on the tie and the tie clip and the pocket square so he was looking like one of the groomsmen and um they were just taking care of him for me and that was really nice like i at one point i just didn't i knew i didn't have to worry so that that was pretty awesome actually yeah so then after that like the ladies were downstairs getting ready we were already dressed and had makeup done but we were like doing the photo photographs and then at one point they like called us all upstairs and we had aiden with us um aiden was allowed to have his backpack which was really like great he didn't want to let go of the backpack at all so you know they they would like let us know ahead of time like hey aiden you're gonna take this picture and then he actually was asking for people to take pictures of him with it, with their phones, which was really funny. It was a lot of pictures, but he hung in there and he was like very cooperative with the photos. Then at one point we were all done with the photographs and they sent us back downstairs. So I took him with me to the bridal suite and he was just hanging out with the girls. Everybody was actually down there. So he was just hanging out with us for the rest of the time until it was time to, to go and um, start the ceremony so for the ceremony aspect itself i let him know that mommy's gonna be making a speech at the front that we're gonna walk in all together and that i'm gonna walk him to his seat and then he's gonna sit down with titi lola which is my cousin elizabeth which was sitting directly at our table elizabeth is great because first of all she's like the best auntie but besides being the best auntie she also has um her nephews are artistic as well like her sister's kids so she already knows I mean, she knew from, from Aiden how to work with autistic children, but she already knows, like, more or less how Aiden operates and how to get him to comply and to do different things by speaking to him because they have that kind of relationship and rapport. So that was, like, one of the things that we really took into account, especially with the seating chart, who was going to be sitting at the table with us 
and who we were going to place sitting close to Aiden that would be able to support him during the ceremony because apparently you know during the ceremony my mom wasn't going to be up there so mom was going to be there too however you know i was going to be at the front my both of my brothers were going to be at the front and joel were going to be at the front which are the four people besides my mom that are really great at dealing with aiden so we made sure that we had a family member that really really knew him that would be able to work with him so that that was like the rundown of the ceremony so once we were done taking pictures we were trying to get him because during the pictures he was able to take out the backpack but at one point he just didn't want to let go of the backpack and you know my brother was really great about being flexible on the fly and just kind of be like you know fuck it let him walk with the backpack it's not a big deal and also the backpack kind of went with the like colors of the wedding so it was like a dark orange um and it had forest green in it so like it kind of went with the color so it really wasn't that bad but i really appreciate them making the exception because i know had it been anybody else they would have probably had a, like the wife would have had a meltdown or the husband would have had a meltdown because it would have quote unquote ruined the pictures but they were completely cool with it so we just let him know like okay so we're gonna walk down the aisle and then mommy's gonna put you in your seat you're gonna sit with titi lola and then we're gonna have a ceremony during the ceremony you have to be quiet remember it's like the library so we kept reminding him of that expected behavior so you know we walk we all did the procession which is everybody coming into the ceremony after the guests were all seated um not seated they were waiting for um us to come in then i did the i performed the ceremony which i am not well now i am but i was not a certified officiant and the reason why I didn't need to be a certified officiant was for the simple fact that my brother and sister had already eloped before the wedding. So during the pandemic, they got engaged. And then um, I want to say the following year, they eloped. Um, I want to say it was like October of 2021, they eloped. But then they decided to have a ceremony because like, you know, they, they wanted to like make it official, official. So I really was like reading a script, which I came up with them. They wanted a really unconventional wedding. They didn't want it to be all super stuffy. And they gave me a time limit of like 45 minutes, which I know that besides the fact that it was because they don't want to have this long, boring, extended reception, not reception, ceremony. But they also were taking into account the fact that I was going to be apart from Aiden and like how long people or, or he would be able to sit through the entire ceremony. So 45 minutes tops. I actually cut it down and it, it, it went, I, I think max was like 35 minutes. It was the first time I was officiating a ceremony. Um, we came up with the ceremony together. Everything was so beautiful. We did uh, the opening remarks. They wanted me to lead a meditation at the beginning, so everybody was just centered. So I did that. They did tell me that they were gonna have a, 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 a chair with my dad's photograph on it, like holding a space for him at the table. And I knew that it was gonna be there, but when I saw that, I completely lost it. So I saw that when I went in and I was just like super choked up. And it took me like, I wanna say like, it felt like eternity, but I know it was like, maybe five to six minutes to get myself together because it was just like shocking for me not so much shocking it was just kind of like a lot <sighs> like right now i'm talking about i'm getting choked up myself but yeah oh my god so during the ceremony i'm like getting choked up at one point i felt like i had a knot in my throat and i'm like get it together marcy you got this you got this right mentally but yeah whatever then after that the ceremony went out went off without a hitch and then the, at the end we did the it's not called the procession is a proce procession whatever when you exit so we all left together i took eight uh, aiden's did aiden stay at the table no i took aiden with me so at that point we went to the back i got him a soda which he wanted um you know what's funny when he sat down with my cousin elizabeth he, he was getting a little grumpy, but as soon as he sat down, he was just like, Didi, I want rice and chicken. 
so she was like when i sat back down that we came back in she was like girl aiden is hungry that is why he did not want to leave his backpack and i was like oh okay got you so thank god the food started immediately after every after everybody you know started getting something to drink like they set up immediately for the food so everything started coming out and then whatever everything went really well so i didn't think to ask aiden why he didn't want to let go of the backpack i did tell the speech teacher to write a speech with him however nobody communicated with me that he did write the speech and he didn't mention it either and me because of all the rushing i didn't check his backpack so i felt bad he had the speech he didn't get to see it to them during the during the event but he did tell them afterwards um during the ceremony however i did catch him basically kind of like getting himself ready for the expectations of the wedding so he was watching an episode of little bill called the ring bear and that's where little bill was um the ring bearer for miss murray his teacher so he kept watching it and and like stimming and like watching it again and again during the ceremony not during the ceremony during the reception just to remind himself about what's gonna happen so like i gave him like a time expectation about when we were gonna go home at one point he was like i want to go home i want to go home and then like i got him soda i got things to, i got him things to eat once he ate he was good he was like hanging out and then when the music started he decided he wanted to dance he was dancing with us which i posted videos on the on the instagram yeah he had a really really good time and 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 then the 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 where they seated us was pretty st strategic because there was like a dancing there was a dancing floor close to us but the speakers were facing into the dancing floor so where we were seated we could hear the music but it wasn't extremely loud also i feel like the noise level itself it wasn't that crazy but aiden's already used to a certain amount of noise because of the fact that we're a very party-ish family and my um my aunt's husband is the one that is like constantly putting the music up and we're having like um, these really loud dominican parties so yeah no like for the most part the evening was great i let i gave him the expectation that once they did the toast and they cut the cake then that that's when we were gonna go home at one point when he was like really asking me to go back to the hotel i told him like we have to party first and we have to you know cut the cake and then we'll go home so he was cool with that then i decided to change him out of the button down shirt because like i tried to like get him comfortable and take the tie off and take off the the suit jacket and just leave him with the button down and like fold up the sleeves and open it up but he's very proper like once he's wearing a button down he wants all the buttons on he doesn't want you to fold anything or anything like that so i was just like okay so what do i do now so i told him i was like okay do you want me to switch you into your t-shirt he was like yes mom so then we did that we so he put he folded his um button down shirt himself folded his jacket and put it in his backpack and then we found a special place for the backpack which was like directly under the table under him and then where we sat him he was close to an outlet as well because eventually i think the portable charger died but the dj was cool in letting him connect his uh, phone to charge at the at the dj booth and also like i was cool with him using my phone as well like anything for him to just be calm and, and relax you guys yako madres know how it is when you have a kid on the spectrum especially when they're like really into technology once that phone dies or that ipad dies it's like you're like you're scrambling you don't know what you're gonna do so definitely i am not anti him using my phone especially for big events like that so um yeah so it was a really really great event overall um i went in and researched a little bit more about how to make our family events more sensory friendly and it's just for me especially with aiden i know it's setting that expectation about what is going to happen at the event and how everything's going to go down kind of giving him an overall rundown of what will happen and then speaking to people at school so that they can reinforce that as well so that was the biggest thing i want to say 
the biggest takeaway also speaking to the people especially if it's a wedding speaking to them about what aiden's needs are so that they can communicate with the wedding coordinator and then if it's your own family member then talking to them directly obviously they've dealt with your child but like letting them know what those kind of events look like for your child as well um so i i went on was it the knot i'll link the article I, it wasn't the knot it was another um wedding website so basically it says a sensory friendly event is an event that is designed to be less sensory stimulating and overwhelming the approach often makes it easier for individuals who have sensory sensitivities like sensory processing disorder such as those with autism spectrum disorder um, that are sensitive to things like noise colors sounds and smells to participate in social activities and community or professional events if your event is whatever it's not necessarily open to the public if you're planning a wedding and you wanted to make want to make it sensory friendly think about those kind of things so some things that they can do is some things we can do is think proactively when we're planning these events ensuring accessibility talk to the event planner research accessibility guides and strategize how we can best accommodate people with sensory sensitivities I know Aiden didn't need it, but I know that the bridal suite was available to us in case we needed like a quiet area where he could hang out if it came to be overwhelming. So even though we didn't use it, the option was there. Managing expectations with respect to the people that are hosting the event, as well as your child, like you need to let them know exactly what's going to happen and what could happen. So just being very clear with communication as a parent and advocating for your child in that way. And then, like I said, what I did with Aiden, talking to him about the expectations about the event beforehand, so he knows exactly what's gonna happen. Another thing, remain calm and flexible. Like, I feel like my brother and sister-in-law, there were some little, like, little things that didn't go as planned, but they were so cool about it that it just really, they weren't gonna let that ruin their day. I did thank my brother for being so flexible about, you know, letting him walk with the backpack or whatever he was like you know there's no problem like there would be no wedding without you and Aiden so it was our pleasure to help accommodate him which was cool also like letting the people at the venue know like there may be changes last minute so being flexible and calm about it can help other guests feel welcome making sure that the R and decor like flowers and things like that not, I mean, I don't know how, how much you can ensure that the flowers won't be, like, triggering to somebody. But, like, knowing that there's going to be flowers and if that's something that bothers your child, you know if you can ask to be seated away from that area or asking to switch with somebody um, at the wedding. So, yeah, having additional spaces like the bridal suite was very, very helpful. There's also other quiet areas in the venue that I could take Aiden to. Even outside, we could have walked outside. Also, I feel like all the event staff that we had have worked with people with autism before, so they were very well, well versed in what to do. Okay. So moving right along, some individuals with autism may not respond when people speak to them. However, at other times they may be startled or upset by even the softest sounds. So sudden noises can be upsetting. So make sure that your child has, if they need headphones or whatever accommodation for sound, make sure that they have that and let the people from the event know that they're going to have it as well. Okay, um, making sure that the seating arrangements are not like too claustrophobic like having i feel like the venue did a very good job of like spacing out the tables not everybody was on top of each other and everybody had their own space so even though there was like i'm sure over 100 people at the wedding it didn't feel like it was 100 people because of the way that the tables were set up and how the venue was set up itself also like letting parents if you're if either you're hosting the event or you're taking your child to an event like this Making sure you know the menu beforehand so that you can pre-plan if you need to take your child snacks. Because like one thing that will definitely have your kid have a meltdown, whether they have autism or not, or any disability at all, or like typically developing child, is being hungry. I know as a t neurotypical person, once I get hungry, my tolerance level for certain things and certain shenanigans completely drops so i become a, a, a completely different person like i literally get hangry so definitely knowing 
the menu beforehand so that you can pre-plan as a parent and have snacks or other things available for your child or if you can ask for an accommodation where they serve a dish that your child will will eat ahead of time like that would be important too um also thinking about lighting in these instances so you know instead of having intense fluorescent lighting having softer lights and another way like let's say that's the fluorescent lighting like let's say you're having an event at a venue that it's just fluorescent lighting and you can't change that hanging fabrics over those lights can actually reduce the intensity this is what we do in the public schools especially in the district 75 schools we used to do that in the classroom so we would hang like like sheer fabric over the lamps to make the the lights less intense also another thing about scent of fluorescent lighting which i don't know if i've discussed on the show before but fluorescent lighting has like a certain hum to it so being aware of that and like thinking about how your child will react to it is important as well so yeah that's pretty much it so yeah designated quiet areas having a social story so aiden had provided his own social story but i'm sure at school they were talking about it and like reading stories about that kind of things there bringing your little arsenal of sensory toys or activities that your child can do so like aiden likes the ipad but let's say that he didn't like the ipad bringing along like a fidget or something like that will help them remain calm during the event another thing from the from the article says like feel free to break tradition not every wedding has to follow the same routine that's why unconventional weddings are becoming the new normal from backyard weddings to adventure elopements to shorten ceremonies which is something that my brother and sister-in-law had um you know re revamping and reimagining tradition is important to help accommodate all the diverse needs of the people that are attending your event and like yeah so they repeated being flexible again anyway so yeah for okay the article is from junebugweddings.com so i'll link that in the show notes one thing oh for fourth of july i give aiden the option whether he wants to participate or not but i did get him used to that as like a thing ever since he was little like he knows that there's gonna be fireworks and they are loud before he used to cover his ears but he's gotten to the point now i'll put pictures in on the instagram uh, account but he knows already that it's gonna be loud and it's gonna be like startling a little bit but he's gotten so used to it that he actually likes and looks forward to it so at one point last weekend which was fourth of july weekend i was like okay we're gonna go to grandma's house he's like but i don't want to go to grandma's house i want to stay home and i'm like remember it's fourth of july weekend i didn't even remind him of the fireworks but he already knew he was like oh we're gonna have fireworks and a parade he gets kind of mixed up with 4th of July and Memorial Day or Labor Day. So I reminded him there wasn't going to be a parade. But he knows that the parade is loud as well. So his expectation already is like it's going to be loud. It's going to be bright lights. And this is what's going to happen this weekend. So it kind of like made him more excited to go. So, you know, that that's what happened. So if Aiden doesn't want to sit outside with us to watch the fireworks, the, uh, the other option is like being inside the house. And watching them from the window which is less intense and then if he really needed that additional layer then noise canceling headphones can be an option as well the good thing about being in the suburbs for fourth of july is that it's not like here in the city there's like constant like da, 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 every like five minutes it's like a certain amount of time and by like 9 30 it's done and he already knows that there's not going to be any more additional fireworks even though like some neighbors do um set off fireworks but it's not nothing like here in the heights you know what's funny the next day i needed to work on the fifth so on july 4th we were back here in the city but he already knows the expectation about what's gonna happen so um i already have like it's not noise canceling but it's these if you look behind me on the youtube video i have these um what is it uh not like canceling what do you call them whatever these dark curtains that prevent light from coming into the room those curtains actually um muffle sound from outside as well so making sure that you have those kind of curtains up instead of like shears and and setting up the expectation helps a lot as well 
anyway comadres we had a very awesome wedding time and i look forward to doing other things like this with aiden you know i i feel like as he's gotten older it has been easier for us you know as time goes on because like i already know what his reaction is going to be so i can preemptively hedge against him having a meltdown at the time like that food thing was probably going to be a thing because like I didn't think that there was not going to be rice on the menu because we're Dominican, but there wasn't rice on the menu. Thank God he was flexible and ate, like, what was it I gave him the chicken? Oh, they had baked potatoes. So I, like, smashed together a baked potato, and then my cousin, <laughs> she had a piece of butter that she had saved from, from, like, when they give you the bread at the beginning. So we took the, we, like, improvised on the spot. We took the butter and cut up that baked potato into like wedges to kind of make it look like french fries so we gave him the 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 barbecue chicken with the baked potato and um crisis was averted but that would have totally been a thing because the minute he sat down he was like i want rice and chicken to so my my cousin he looked there dead in the eye and was like dead serious about that anyway comadres i am going to finish the episode how i usually do which is follow me at comadreando pod on instagram and everywhere else if you have any questions at all or any suggestions to add to making your events more sensory friendly or to help our kids prepare for those kind of events send them on over um if you have any questions at all please feel free to send me a comadregram via email at marcy at .com or slide up into my dms also Shout out to Shout Out LA. They printed an article recognizing yours truly as um, an innovator and all of that. So if you haven't had a chance to read the article, go on over to Shout Out LA. I will link that in the show notes as well. Please remember to visit our website, www.comadrandopat.com, to read our latest blog posts, find, about, find out about future events, and to get your own Comadre merch. Look at this beautiful t-shirt that I'm wearing today. Uh, it's a comadreando t-shirt which is very actually very soft cotton very life lightweight um for a day like today that it was very humid it actually was a good choice to wear yeah and thank you for spending time with your comadre bye everyone good night hello hello comadre hey comadre do you have a minute for comadre time